All right, guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So I finally get the time and the weather to make you guys a tiny home update. Now, with all the things that have been going on at the old house up here, with the water lines, the sewer lines, and so many other things, it's been hard to find time to come down here. Then on top of that, as soon as I start getting the time and the ability to come down here, what happens? All the prices on all the materials go through the roof plywood $68 a sheet really two by four studs nine something a stud come on now literally they were a dollar 79 this time a year and a half ago so I don't know guys you just got to do the best you can but I did get some things done we are working with materials we have in place jumping around working on different projects just to try and move forward so let me show you what we've done so far so the first thing we need to talk about is the power. So, in case you guys didn't know, we were having a problem after we moved it with moisture getting down into the meter and kicking it off. It ended up when we moved it, the glue on all those couplers up there had gone bad. So I siliconed all those. Now, the last time you had seen, we had run the main power line, but we hadn't hooked it up. So we have actually hooked it up now so we are actually able to have power down the tiny house now if you notice this wire has not been cable managed very well there's a reason for that i left a lot of extra because the property line of these two properties is right here now there's always a chance that a neighbor that might buy this property or the power company itself could complain if they complained i want the room to be able to move this whole structure back over over or whatever I need so I left a lot of extra now what you also see right here is I drove my ground in I put my acorn on but the problem is you notice it didn't get drove all the way in we actually hit a vein of bedrock which is very normal up here on top of the hill you'll notice that there's areas that are really cut out and then there's areas that are big rolling hills a lot of these areas that are still hills have bedrock buried under them but now we need to go to the other end and talk about the electric on the other end because that is just as important. All right, as you can see, guys, we have our power box here. You will notice that there's no main breaker. The reason for that is I don't have to have a main breaker because when I put my solar on, on the outside of this wall, we have to have a cutoff for the panels and a cutoff for the main power. So. There is no need inside here for a shutoff. There also is a shutoff way up on the pole, but you should always have one pretty close to your house, to your door. Now, that said, we also did run the power wire for the RV up into here, and I also ran an outlet just temporarily, so I had some power to work with down here. Now the real benefit to this is I don't have to work off extension cords anymore, which is a nightmare. If you've ever done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I haven't been able to get a whole lot done in the actual tiny house, honestly. Realistically, I just haven't had the time, the weather, or the materials to get much done. But that doesn't mean I haven't still been doing some work. So other than the electric, I haven't been able to get a whole lot done on the inside of the tiny house just because of material shortages, also because of the weather and just time. But honestly, I feel like we're at a good starting point and it'll just get better. Now, I have been able to get a little bit done outside. So let me show you what we've been doing out here. All right, so what I've done is installed tails all down this now what you guys need to understand is originally this was meant to just have a flat soffit and just let the water run off it was actually designed old barn style to where it wouldn't have gutters this was just supposed to be a carport to house the backhoe i had but i've gone down this side and the other side and put tails on on either side of each of the rafters and then i'm going to go ahead and put the fascia board on which i'm just going to use like a two by six or a two by eight and then i'll get my soffit put on and then I'll be able to trim it all out. So while it doesn't look like much, it's part of the prepping process to get this all done. But having electric down here speeds the whole process up because I can actually run more than one tool at a time. So earlier we were talking about the material cost side of things. And we've been doing a lot of searching and spending a lot of time working on ways to get material at lower cost. 
So we actually connected with my dad who helped us find a guy that had a roll of 10-4 wire for sale. Now 10-4 was not optimal for what we wanted. I did want to have something strong enough that I could run pretty much anything I wanted off any outlet. Whether it was an electric heater, whether it was a pump, whatever. So it's a little harder to work with, but for what we paid for that roll, it's well worth it. Now another thing we got is some sheets of tongue and groove plywood. Now these things right now are running about 68 bucks at Lowe's, but we were able to get this off a guy that had bought them and wasn't gonna use them at a much lower price. If you wanna know where these sheets are gonna be going, you'll have to stay tuned to the next update video to show you because Missy's changed the plans on me once again. So make sure you watch the next one. But let me take you over and show you how I've been helping out the kids on the RV. All right. Open that up. Open that up. Now, we have closed in the whole front and pedestaled the front where the seats were. Now, this is a temporary kind of thing. This is not something that's gonna be long-term living. This is so they can save for a down payment to do something bigger in their lives. Obviously, it needs lots of insulation, trim, wall coverings, different things need to be done. But even just getting a light coat of paint on this place has cleaned this place up so much and made it smell so much better. Now, they'll come down and do the second and third coats and start getting things closed in just a little better than they are now in order to make it usable. Now, as I told you guys, the electric is hooked up in here. They've got the breaker turned off, which is exactly what I told them to do when they're not down here. We do have to go through and we're gonna lay another layer of plywood on the floor just because they're just now starting to turn a little, a little sponge. Now granted, that's me at 200 and some pounds. So they'd probably be fine, but a few dollars spent to not have to worry about it and give them a chance to strengthen up this old place. Now it's important to understand the theory here is literally just to downsize their life. The world's in a very shaky place right now, let's be honest. Having a place that you can pay almost nothing to live in while you bank all your money in order to better your life in the future is an opportunity many of us don't actually get or are too scared to take that leap to. This is a moment where people can get their life in order and that's important to us. Obviously, we have expectations that no one's perfect, but at the same time, we do expect our kids to save money and move forward and progress. This is not just to survive, but with that said, it gives them an opportunity to straighten up their lives, to build something for the future and have something. So as spring starts to kick off, we start moving forward. I've got tons of plans to get on, tons of projects to get done. The tiny house is gonna get kicked into high gear. One way or another, I will find the materials. I will find the money if I have to. We will get this done. I am ready to fully go. The weather actually has still been snowing on us, but I'm still not backing down. We got a beautiful 61 degree day today. So I'm gonna get started, which means I've gotta let you guys go. I appreciate you guys coming along with us on this journey. This tiny house is gonna be our ticket to an easier future all around. And I have tons to do. But with that said, I would encourage you to come along and watch the rest of our fails, our wins, and everything else that goes along with life here on the Frugal Homestead. So if you haven't already, and I don't know why you wouldn't have by now, go down, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you see all of our upcoming videos. Like, comment, let us know. Would you be willing to live in a little RV? Would you be willing to live in a tiny house? We'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas. And with that said, I will see you in the next one. Man, there's a lot of mud out here. <laughs>